I'm sorry, but I'll have to spend some time in the hospital. After the hospital examination, they felt it was best to look into it further, so I'm heading in for a diagnostic evaluation. As a result, I won't be able to care for things at home for a while. I apologize. Are you sure? Is everything all right? Yeah, that's just to be safe, so don't worry too much about it. But thank you. No, Avery, I'm not concerned about your health. I'm concerned about my life in your absence. Huh. I mean, I'm going to have to do the housework, right? That's something I can't take. It's inconvenient, and I may need to bring you anything while you're in the hospital. You really should have looked after yourself better. My husband's cruel statements stung me tremendously, and I deeply regretted our marriage. But his heinous acts did not stop there. He went on to say, actually, you don't have to come back even after you've been discharged. What exactly do you mean? This has been on my mind for some time. Women are such costly creatures. You're still claiming you have to be admitted for tests, which costs money, right? It's a perpetual drain on our resources. I've been having a lot of second thoughts about my decision recently. I'm not sure why I married you in the first place, so you're not required to return. I don't want to look at someone who can't work and merely consumes money. I resolved to divorce the moment I heard these words. I don't want to spend the rest of my life with someone who is incapable of cherishing his wife. Okay, I'll grant your request and divorce you. Wow, truly? You're probably saying it in the heat of the moment. No, I'm not kidding. You can be relieved since I'll be in the treatments tomorrow and you won't have to see me again. Is that what you're saying? My husband seemed astonished. He most likely didn't grasp the scenario and he surely doesn't know everything there is to know about me. I've kept one item from him and I'm sure he'll be astonished when he finds out. My spouse and I met on an arranged date around three years ago and decided to marry. My 28th birthday, at the very least, but things did not go as planned. By the time I was 30, I felt like I was the only unmarried person among my peers. My mother continued to encourage me to marry while she was still living, and I began to feel the strain. It wasn't that I didn't want to marry. It's just that no relationship lasted long enough to warrant marriage. Except with one exception. I assumed we would eventually marry, but I lost contact with him during our second year together. I went to his house one day without telling him and observed him enter with an unfamiliar woman. Not only the two of them, but two more people who resembled her parents also entered. That's when I realized he dumped me. After that, I took a more direct route and set up a date, which is how I met my current husband. Though it may sound trite, the first time I met him, I thought he was a calm and friendly person. I was in a hurry to marry and thought, why not him? And I began really considering marriage. Our parents appeared relieved and our relationship progressed peacefully until we married. It was fantastic that I was finally allowed to finish my single existence, but my husband gradually changed when we married. When we got married, he started making plans for our future together. I thought it was a fantastic idea at first, but it irritated me over time. When I broke one of those restrictions, my husband was irritated and chastised me. Didn't we agree on these rules? We must adhere to them. Isn't it true that we're a team? We should collaborate. He stated it passionately, but to be honest, I understood he was being a thorn in my side. I forced myself to agree with him at the time, but following that occurrence, he began to point out my flaws clearly. I apologize and follow the rules at first. For example, he may prepare the bath 15 minutes before he gets home, having dinner ready the moment he stepped out of the bath and so on. I come home from work in around 30 minutes. He calls me on his way home and I prepare the bath 15 minutes later so that it's ready when he arrives. To be honest, it's a real pain. Based on his projected arrival time, I felt it would be a lot easier to prepare things. My husband's pestering got too much for me when I started feeling this way and I finally complained. Look, I have my own responsibilities and there will be times when I am unable to satisfy your expectations. Because our lives aren't the same every day, may I accomplish things on my own time. I vow to have the bath ready for you when you get home. For a brief minute, my husband was taken aback then he gazed at me with wide eyes, said nothing, and walked off to the bedroom. Is it possible that I said too much? I began to feel guilty, but then he returned from the bedroom. When he slammed something down on the table, I was about to say something. I was taken aback when I saw what he had written. What? What exactly does this mean? What exactly is this? Are you blind? Let me clarify. This is a divorce document. It is used to end a marriage. I'm not interested in it. I'm just wondering if you're serious about this. It's also already filled out. Did you intend to divorce from the start? That's correct. I prepared the divorce papers concurrently with the marriage documents. 
Were we not strangers living together? When two strangers live together, we can't expect everything to go perfectly. Therefore, I was prepared for this. Plus, didn't I tell you when we were married that we should always honor our promises? It's only normal to divorce if you can't keep them. I still can't believe it. I recognized then that his friendliness during our matchmaking was fake. He was constantly ready to divorce. Thinking about this made me feel pitiful for being content with our marriage. Should I simply sign the divorce papers in front of me and be done with them? But I decided to remain cool. If I divorce now, I will definitely disappoint my parents, friends, and relatives, all of whom were overjoyed for me. And given my age, I wasn't sure whether I'd be able to find another partner if I divorced now. I had no choice but to apologize because it was my fault. I'll do my best to meet your expectations from now on. Could you reconsider your divorce? Is that how you apologize, by the way? You must go down on your knees and really apologize, or I will not believe you. I knelt on the floor and apologized to my spouse, despite my reluctance and irritation. My husband went with a delighted expression on his face, a parting shot that I should be cautious of from now on. I was immobile for some time after his departure because I was so irate that tears began to form in my eyes. I never expected to be subjected to such absurdity, even if it was to avoid divorce. I couldn't believe the man I married could do something like that with such ease. From then on, I found myself becoming more cautious in my daily life. I always put my personal needs last when I'm chasing time every day. My life had become entirely focused on my husband. He appears delighted with my newfound obedience, but I was exhausted both physically and mentally. But there was one person who brought me some solace throughout these times, my buddy Ella, whom I'd known since high school and still see on occasion. Ella had been informed of my husband's recent actions. She didn't advise me to divorce, but she did remark that if things continued as they were, I'd be treated like a servant. I began to consider that having a divorce could be the best option. Ella, who was often concerned about my mental state, suggested a suggestion one day. She proposed that you assist me with my work. What do you do? However, I lack experience and am inept with computers. There's nothing to worry about. You'll get the hang of it once you've been properly instructed. Avery, you're a quick study, aren't you? Everything will be okay. Ella currently owns and operates an internet store. I had previously heard that she earns a good living. I assumed she was still doing everything on her own, so why would she ask me? She mentioned that she could use an extra set of hands. Looking back, I believe Ella was simply attempting to assist me knowing that I was feeling suffocated in my daily life. I was in need of a break myself, so I eagerly agreed. I wasn't sure if I should tell my husband, but Ella recommended that I keep it a secret. After all, if he says no and you lose this, you'll be stuck with nothing. It's not like you're having an affair or anything. It is acceptable for a married couple to keep a few little secrets. Just tell him you're going to hang out at my apartment if he asks. So I started working at Ella's residence a few days later. The task primarily required the use of a computer, and at first I struggled and had to rely on Ella for assistance, but I gradually became accustomed to it. Of course, when I went home, my life would send her around my husband again, but having a space to breathe made me feel a lot better, and I also started earning a nice wage. However, because I was dependent on my husband for financial support, I begged her to reduce the amount I was paid, but possibly as a result of the everyday tension. I became ill one day and had to visit the hospital. They suggested that I be hospitalized for testing there. I'm hoping it's nothing severe, but the doctor suggested getting tested, so I agreed. When my husband returned home and I told him about it, his reaction was completely heartless. How long will you be at the hospital for testing and who will look after me while you're there? I'm not really sure about that. You can't just go into a hospital and check yourself in. You must adequately prepare. Get someone to prepare a hot bath for me in 15 minutes before I arrive home. I could consult with my folks. Will you think about it? Where does it lead me if we involve your mother? Don't you know somebody who is more discreet? Someone on whom we can rely. That is asking too much. Sorry, but you'll have to handle it on your own. Finally, the spouse agreed grudgingly, murmuring objections. When you return from the hospital, I'll have you working hard. Hearing this again and again reminded me of something Ella said once. It's acceptable to tell him he's wrong, and if that means divorce, then be it. I eventually stood up to my husband after remembering this. Isn't it me who's going in for testing? You can't even say, take care, or show some concern. What? The same is true for home duties. You can't do it on your own, can you? I'm not asking you to manage the responsibilities of a huge household, just your own. 
If you can't accomplish it, you're as powerless as a child. No, you're worse than a child because even a child can learn. I couldn't keep the words pent up inside me any longer. What? Have you forgotten about the apology you made the other day? If you continue to speak to me in this manner, I will immediately divorce you. Are you all right with that? I don't mind. Your delusion of being a king is extreme. I see. You are not required to return after being discharged. You're not fit to be my wife if you can't make a cent. I definitely chose a losing ticket with you. Let's get a divorce now. I have some time before I'm admitted to the hospital for the test, so I'll get started. Is that all right? Are you certain about this? You won't be able to undo it. If you apologize now and write a vow or anything, I might still forgive you. What do you think? I have no plans to apologize. I'm looking for a divorce. So before I was brought to the hospital for tests, I decided to divorce. He was leaving for work in the morning on the day she was admitted to the hospital. He asked, are you going to stay with your friend Ella? However, you will no longer have time for enjoyment. There would be no time for socializing because you would have to earn your own living. Is your acquaintance one of those women who subsists on her husband's salary? That man must be deaf to have a wife who is solely interested in wasting his money. He's most likely a weak husband who goes along with everything his wife suggests. In any case, try your best to make a living. He walked away, arrogant, as if he'd won, unaware that I was truly working. This meant I wouldn't have to alter my income any longer, and he didn't realize it was his job, not mine, that was in jeopardy. I went to the hospital for testing, terrified of what might be discovered, but everything was okay, and I was discharged without incident. On the day I was discharged, Ella came to pick me up. I was assisted out of the hospital and began working the next day at Ella's residence. I had already signed a contract for an apartment, and all that remained was for me to move out of my husband's house. I had planned for movers to come and assist me with my move a few days later. After packing my bags and coming home, I completed my work at Ella's place the following day and discovered a slew of missed calls on my phone. My husband made the calls. I picked up the phone, thinking I'd left something behind. Hello? Don't call me so frequently when I'm at work. What do you require? You're the one who tipped me off, aren't you? What are you on about? Ella's spouse works as an area manager. Oh, you're serious? You were aware, weren't you? Who can say? Taking vengeance, eh? Pathetic. You're a useless lady who tries to ruin my life with tattle-tattle. Think what you want. We're no longer married, remember? Wait, did you just call to say that? He stumbled a little. No, that's not it. Could you, uh, clear up the confusion for me? What exactly do you mean? Tell the area manager that everything was a misunderstanding on your end. Otherwise, if I encounter him at a meeting, it'll be weird, right? Please notify him as soon as possible if you understand. If you do, I'll even pay you alimony or whatever. Is that how you go about asking someone for a favor? What? Do you always apologize in this manner? If you're going to apologize, you should apologize from the bottom of your heart all the way down to the ground. That was something my ex-husband once said to me. I'm not going to allow him to say he can't. Arr, grr. Oh, you want to make a video call? A phone call allows me to see nothing. He changed to a video call and revealed himself. Hello, I sincerely apologize for what occurred. Please clarify the situation with the area manager. He knelt on the ground, but I'm the sort to repay what I receive and then more. Sorry, the signal isn't very good. Because I couldn't see anything, I can't clear up any confusion. Bye for now, but wait a minute. The conversation ended there. As a result, this incident came to an end. The rumors about my ex-husband circulated to other store managers at meetings attended by the area manager. He found it difficult to stay and requested a transfer, after which he was sent to another region. And because of his high position and decent salary, he couldn't resign. But the rumors followed him to his new location, leaving him with nowhere to go. He now appears to be working quietly. I've been working with Ella ever since, and our company is thriving. We intend to grow and diversify into new businesses. Ella has been a tremendous help to me. I might still be a maid if Ella hadn't been there, so if she ever needs assistance, it'll be my time to provide it. That is the only way I can reciprocate her generosity.